public doesn't really know about Ray Dolby. He's, he's out there somewhere. But they're aware of the fact that, they were aware of the fact that a cassette labeled Dolby sounds good. That Dolby surround sounds good. There's a switch, look, I can switch it in and out. Isn't that great? You know, and, and they're kind of aware of the fact that Dolby on a theater marquee sounds good. But all of those things are possible because of Ray Dolby's inventions, which are at the heart of the whole process. An early affinity for science and music put Ray on a path to technological discovery. From his high school projection club, to teaching electronics in the army, to earning patents for the Ampex video tape recorder before he'd even finished college. In all aspects of his life, he was really interested in finding solutions. He was typically figuring out a better way, making improvements on things, refinements. Ray's a, a problem solver. I think that's what he enjoyed the most. Uh, in, uh, finding solutions to, to, to problems. Ray's talent for problem solving led him to discover solutions that would change the future of the entertainment industry. Here we have a scientist who invents tools for the artist. And so you get the blend of the two important you know, cornerstones of entertainment, which is science and creativity. Uh, you know, imagination that may not be governed by science couples with the scientist, Ray Dolby, and the result is a whole new frontier is open. Ray was extremely intelligent. It was clear that he wanted to build a company that stood for quality, that provided solutions for people. I think one of the keys to success when he was setting up the company and he was hiring on more engineers was first and foremost, get the technology right and hire brilliant technical people who could support his work, but who could also push him further. Over the years, Ray continued to push the boundaries of audio technology. Without a doubt, the achievement that he's been most proud of has been spectral recording. I still remember being downstairs trying to get to sleep and hearing the test signals going off late into the night with three doors closed between me and him, and I was still hearing all the different single, single frequency uh, test tones being played back. Back in the mid-80s, we started investigating digital recording, um, um, even though SR had come along. So we came up with Dolby Digital, which was putting digital soundtracks on film in between the sprocket holes on one side of the film. And uh, yeah, so that was a, clearly a transition from, from analog-based film into digital sound. And along the way, Ray mentored the minds that would carry on his legacy. Well, Ray was uh, always very um, interested in technology and invention, and he talked to me about the inventors in the company and how important it was that we really nurtured them and gave them that opportunity to invent. If he had an idea for you, he wouldn't just say, do it this way. He would sort of drop a little nugget of wisdom on you that would get you thinking. And like three days later, you'd realize, Oh, <laughs> that would really help if I did it this way. Well, the thing that strikes me about Ray is he really believed in people. And he was therefore very, he came across as very humble and very sincere. Because whether he was talking to the CEO of a Fortune 500 company or the taxi driver on the way back from a trade show, Ray was deeply curious in who people were and what he could learn from them. Um, because ultimately, for Ray, it really was about his belief in people and that everybody has it in themselves to do great things. And Ray was committed to creating an environment where that could happen.